just unbelievable that you can come here with a straight face and defend the practices of SDTC and its board in the face of that. Uh, and, and then at the beginning of each meeting, my understanding is that the conflicts per director would be read out before the beginning of the meeting. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Wait. Thank you. So to start off the meeting, every director knew which investments on the agenda each board member that was conflicted had a, an investment in, which is what you just confirmed. So the Auditor General over a five-year period, the Auditor General over a five-year period went over 226 board approved transactions, which was a, a sample of the more than 400 during that period of time, found 186 of those were conflicted. In other words, 82% of all transactions that were coming before the board were conflicted with board members or board members had an interest. Is that correct? So you were recusing yourselves or abstaining board members were 82% of the time. Mr. President. Mr. Chair, the allegations of conflict of interest were made against me last year. A detailed investigation and a complex investigation was completed by the Ethics Commissioner. All of those issues of administrative problems and... Mr. We met. that was not my question, Mr. We met. I would appreciate that you stick to answering the question out of respect for members of Parliament. De, de l'ordre, s'il vous plaît. Um, order, please, order. To the witness, to the witnesses, members here have limited time. So when you answer, it's part of their time. So I encourage all participants. Oh, one moment, please. One moment, please. I always give the last answer to the witness for the next three, three and a half minutes. It's Mr. Perkins who has the opportunity to ask you questions. If members from both sides think that you are not answering as exactly as they wish to hear, it's their decision to interrupt you and ask you to start again. Three minutes and 35 seconds, please. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. I will ask again. Mr. We met. 82% of the time, according to the Auditor General, directors were conflicted in the transactions over the five years, and those overlap with your time on the board. So, Mr. We met. Uh, when a board member of the committee is briefed that other board members have a conflict, uh, do they recuse themselves or leave the room? Because your chair, Ms. Vacherian, didn't know the difference last week when mm -hmm. she testified. Mr. President. Mr. Chair, while I was uh, on the board, I observed that all the administrators who had declared conflicts of interest recused themselves by not being present. There were gaps in the minutes or errors in the minutes. That's well accepted. We know that. So. There are errors, but that can't be. Action! You didn't actually leave the room, so let me let me go over this. So you were you were appointed in 2019, and that Vacheron is appointed the chair, and you went to the CEO. She testified here before committee. She testified and said, "Direct uh, that you said direct conflicts of interest are now allowed." So I'm going to join the board that I was asked to join of a company that had already been doing businesses with SDTC. Is that correct? Did you say, well, now that conflicts are allowed, it's okay for me to join that board since it's doing business here and the chair is allowing that? By the way, that was Lithion. I exercised an option in that business after informing the board, and it had nothing... The witness is not answering the question. I asked him mm -hmm. if he said this, and he's going to what his investments were. I'll ask that question Point later. of order. 
Point of order, I would Mr. like Chair? the witness to answer the questions I'm asking. Just point of yes, order. Mr. Durant, yes. I respect the fact that Mr. Perkins wants to ask questions. I'll remind him that we have interprets and that if the witness is listening to the interpretation, it's really hard for those that are uh, listening. It's hard on the ears of the interpreters. Merci. Oui, merci beaucoup, Monsieur Durant. Yes, thank you very much. Mr. Wiemann. Here's your time. The clock is still, is still top uh, talking. Because it is two languages here, um, if, if, if you could endeavor to uh, allow time for Mr. Wiemann to hear your, your comments and vice versa. You do have the floor. I hear your point. We're just getting started. There'll be lots of opportunity to question the witnesses, many different directions. I'm going to turn things back over to you. You've got a minute and a half. Mr. Wiemann, did you say I'm going to join the Board of Lithia now since Annette Pesherian is the chair and conflicts are at odd. Yes or no? No. No. That the CEO lied to committee. I joined the board, but not because Annette Bersheran was there. I didn't know Annette Bersheran. You were already on the board. You went to the CEO. I'm the CEO has testified that you said you would join the board of Lithia now that Annette Bersheran's on board because conflicts are allowed. Did you say that? Yes I, or no? I, and I it's did, important, and here's why. I said no. I can, I, how many times do you need no? This is no. So you're saying the CEO lied? I don't know what she said. What is your 1% of lithium worth today? $11,000. $11,000. And in that time, while you were on the board, lithium on early 2022 got $4 million from SDTC. Is that correct? I've, I've before I was appointed, it received $4 million. Well, according to SDTC's records, it was in 2022 that it got $4 million. That's on their website. Are you saying that SDTC is wrong on their no. website? Well, there are some nuances here. The investment was approved in summer 2018 before I was appointed, and then it was provided little by little during the, the project. Thank you. Mr. Kakucha, in your opening statement, you said with respect to the improper COVID payments, of which 38.5 million tax dollars improperly went out the door, according to the Auditor General, not to mention 63 conflicts of interest involving <coughs> board members in which millions were funneled into companies in which board members had interests in, you said that you relied in good faith on legal advice. Is the legal advice that you, as a member of the board, received from one Mr. Ed Vandenberg? I'm sorry, I was muted by the host. Um, yes, it was, honorable member. Okay. The same Ed Vandenberg who sat on the two-person SDTC member council, correct? Uh, correct, honorable member. Yeah. So, you're a lawyer, Mr. Kukucha, for you, Mr. Chair. Do you not see a conflict there that Mr. Vandenberg sat on the member council while at the same time providing legal advice to the board and being remunerated for such service? Uh, there were discussions at the board about the structure of the member council and the challenges with it. And uh, my understanding was management was trying to work with uh, uh, government to, to try and find a way forward with that. But yes, it... it Mr. Vandenberg uh, uh, had been providing legal advice to the board on other matters as well. It wasn't just in respect to the improper and unlawful COVID relief payments, right? I, I keep getting muted. I apologize, Honorable Member. Um, yes, he was providing advice, and Th I do thank you. One thank point. you for that, Mr. And Mr. Cooper. Just just one second. So I, I'm sorry. Um, I think what's happening is uh, is that when a witness is done speaking, we return to a member. You're being muted. So if if you could just uh, unmute yourself to both witnesses, Amakou Pali Suple. If you could un unmute yourself, um, that that's what ha that's what's happening. So. Uh, it doesn't always happen. I think it's because of just the, it's, it's, well, anyway, for, for today, that's what has to be done. So, Mr. Cooper, you have three minutes, 15 seconds. The floor is yours again. Uh, Mr. Kukucha, 
Have you read the SDTC's Enabling Legislation v. Canada Foundation for Sustainable Development Technology Act? I presume you have. You, you do need to, as I said, you do need to unmute yourself, sir. But back to you. I, there you I, go. Yeah, over to you. Um, uh, honorable member, I have not read the entire act. I have read the policies related to SDTC. Um, board member, as, as a board member, surely you were familiar with the enabling legislation. I mean, I find it incredible to, if you weren't. I mean, that's a big problem in and of itself. Uh, I, sorry, I keep getting muted. I apologize, honorable member. I keep, uh, I, I have a general overview of the legislation, but I do not have not read it in detail. On it sure isn't actually a very big piece of legislation. Uh, it would take all of 15 minutes to go through. And uh, if you had bothered to read the act, you would have known that at section 16 sub 2, it states, quote, no member shall profit or gain any income or acquire any property from the foundation or its activities. That's precisely what was happening in the case of Mr. Vandenberg. So not only was uh, he in a conflict of interest in providing legal advice, he was breaking the law. Isn't that right? I, based on your statement, uh, honorable member, I, I will take it at face value. I would only comment that once we got into the special committee process, I actually did uh, flag for the board uh, and management the issue of Mr. Vandenberg and ask he be removed, um, but he was not removed at that time. So uh, again, conflicts of interest, Im money improperly going out the door, and reliance supposedly in good faith on counsel who was in a blatant conflict of interest and who was in blatant contravention of the SDTC Act. I mean, it's just unbelievable that you can come here with a straight face and defend the practices of SDTC and its board in the face of that. And speaking, Mr. Kakucha, of law-breaking at SDTC, uh, which you were complicit in, uh, Mr. Vandenberg was part of a two-member council, a council that under the Act is required to have 15 members and requires five members to achieve quorum, and yet this two-person council appointed five directors to the SDTC board, all unlawful appointments. How do you explain that? 